Our celebrity chef this year has delighted the palates of his peers, food writers, and restaurant critics alike. He's regarded as one of America's most imaginative and talented chefs. He has three world-renowned restaurants and can be seen on the PBS series Secrets of a Chef. Please join me in welcoming Chef Hubert Keller. Chef, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hello, good evening, everyone. We are so delighted to have Chef Keller here all the way from San Francisco, and he's going to do something for openers for us, white gazpacho. We can't wait to see what it is. Let's go. All right, go. so absolutely. So very often, I think when we're thinking about uh, gazpacho, we're always thinking about tomato and then red. And I think tonight we, we're just going to, I will share you a recipe, which actually is from uh, Fleur de Lis restaurant in San Francisco. So it is a white gazpacho, and the ingredients, there's nothing different in there, actually no tomato at all. So what I'm doing here, and it's, <coughs> I'm sorry, and it's very simple actually, but the, the, the component, the ingredients are very interesting because I'm actually using some uh, cucumbers. And again, when you do that at home, it's actually very simple. We're just gonna put those cucumbers into our mixing bowl. Then surprisingly, I'm adding the same amount of uh, green grapes and I put the grapes in there. So of course, so far has nothing to do with white, right? But you will see later on, of course, I will add uh, some uh, uh, Greek yogurt in there. So not only it's very flavorful, it's easy to make, but it's also very healthy. So that's what we're looking for. And then another ingredient, I'm actually adding some almond flowers into it. So let's put some almond flowers there. All right, so, so far we have all those ingredients in there. I'm just gonna add a tiny little bit of water in there just that actually the blade can start on, on taking it, but you wanna be really careful not to add too much water. Again, the little bit of liquid is just that the blade really start on taking it. One question, of course, is you see me using a, bla um, a blender here. It is very important that actually using a blender because I think any, any home chef probably have figured out there are some food processor and there are blenders. Sometimes we are confusing them. I think you never get the same result. I think doing one or the other in the same element. I think each one is designed for a particular use. Blenders, really, you will never obtain the same uh, texture of the product if you would your food processor. So I guess I'm not selling the product, but I probably better have one of each in, in your house, right? It's actually about having a very smooth gazpacho. So again, I'm adding some salt, salt in there, a little bit a little bit of pepper and like I said it's all about good health so we're gonna put a little garlic in there it's good for your heart I guess they say and then some uh, some shallots also and a little bit vinegar just actually to add some little acidity in there just to balance off a little bit of sweetness and then you can see how it is you can do that in the morning, you can do that the day before. That's kind of a safe recipe, so the day when you're really entertaining, the friends are walking in, it's already chilled and you just pour it out and you serve it. So, here we go, we're gonna blend it now. So here you can see basically how, how easy it was and so it's, it is fairly smooth, but you see we still have tiny little bit of pieces in there. So what I do recommend is actually running it to a strainer. And that's exactly the texture that we're obtaining right, right over here. So you can see how the color became. It becomes actually quite white. That's why we call it the white gazpacho. So the next step, what I really want to share with you is, it's easy always when we say white gazpacho, very often we serve in a little plate, we put a little garnish in the middle, and usually we, we leave into that, right? And I think the idea today is a simple soup, but very often when you have something simple, you still can use something very simple when you entertain, you want to surprise your friends, you want to make sure they, they talk about the item. So today I actually want to present it in different containers, and that's where your creativity really comes in. You can actually play, you can really, you know, very often you have these little, little termita spoons, all different sizes and colors, and from souvenirs you bring back from trips and you never use them. Well, get it out of the closet, right? And actually you can use them, and what you can do in that case, you're pouring your soup straight in those little cups, and you actually can serve those not just as an appetizer, I'm going to ask you a little passing hors d'oeuvre, or when you have a little pool party, you can transfer it in little plastic shooter cups also. So you have really, really the options, the options are kind of endless. And what we can do also, let me quickly grab a towel. So that's just one idea. 
then what we can do also, remember we can use, for example, martini glasses, and we can have fun with it. So we're that's just going to- That's a serving vessel after my own heart. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right. And then of course, we didn't put any liquor in there, but I guess for the adults, uh, don't hesitate in that gazpacho, you probably can put a little vodka in there or some great gin. Uh, it can make the soup only better. <laughs> uh, so as long that, as long that, yeah, you make sure you have to watch the children hanging around the pool and try to <laughs> steal one of those gazpachos, right? So anyway, we have, uh, we have that presentation, as you can see, or you can use another kind of vessel. So you can really be very, very creative. You could add little pieces of lobster, you can add a little piece of scallop, you can put a little smoked salmon in there. But today what I did, I took a little bit of a grapeseed oil or olive oil, and I take vanilla beans and I take out the pods of the vanilla bean. And if we have quickly time, I'll show you how to do that. And I just put the pods in there and then you leave it in there two, three, four days. And then once you shake it, you see it gets a little, little cloudy. And then after that, I just put some drops actually of that vanilla oil. And when you taste it, it actually makes a big difference just by, by tasting it. And suddenly you start on seeing the little pods, like little eyes, and when it comes in front of the guest, probably your friend's going to be impressed. They think you're a terrific chef, and you haven't done anything, actually, just putting a little vanilla in oil, right? But I think it really, it really helps to, 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 it basically, you can talk about on the table. I think it comes a little conversation piece. And then, of course, what we can also do, I actually have some uh, grapes. Just since we have a martini glass, I put some uh, frozen grapes. You can put a green one, uh, a red one. You can alternate all that. But it's actually pretty nice and refreshing. And you can see how they're fogged up because they're actually frozen. And we can put those as a little garnish in our glasses. So again, between a frozen grape, between the, the, the vanilla oil. And imagine if now I put just a tiny piece of lobster, it's like a five, five star dish just for cucumber and Chef, Greek yogurt. We have one very, very interesting thing here through the magic of television. Look at this serving. Totally, vessel, Bill. Folks. And we are right because look at this. We took, let's say, a little, a little eggshell. We, we carved it down. We actually presented, put a little straw in there so you can either drink it and uh, taste it and pass it around. And I promise you, they also work great for food fights. I'm going to try one too. <laughs> mm. Delicious. Absolutely fabulous. Let's give Chef Hubert a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you.